Good evening. Welcome to my channel tonight. We're gonna be playing probably one of the most fucked up games that I know of. <laughs> uh, maybe not a game per se, but um, a visual novel. I've watched the anime more than once. But, uh, novels tend to be a bit more uh, in-depth. And I'm doing this with the new graphics because the old graphics, um, yeah, it, it looked like I drew them. So. Let's get into this. I don't know if I'm going to have to do voices. Welcome to the world of Higurashi when they cry. The Oni Kakushi arc will be the opening inviting you into this world. Don't play tough. Please just enjoy the life in Hinamizawa to it the fullest. The difficulty is extremely high, but I hope you will enjoy the reward. I appreciate you stopping by, PK. Please do not lament, I will forgive you, even if the world will not forgive you. Repeated. So please tell me, what will it take for you to forgive me? Frederica Birkenstall. Victing us. Okay. This is a work of fiction. As if you couldn't guess. 80, 1983, early summer of the 58th year of the Showa era. If I was going to be ripped apart anyways, having my body ripped apart would have been far better. Trusted her. No, I still trust her. Even in this very moment, I trust her. I'm starting to realize. I only want to trust her because I refuse to accept the truth. It was as if I was trying to convince myself in such a silly, sobbing voice, and those tears, those tears making a mess of my face. That mechanical, repetitious sound finally stilled, and everything fell silent. Only the cry of the cicadas remained, annoyingly loud. Yet, I felt as if I could still hear her voice. That's not possible. She is no longer speaking. The only one crying is me. She never cried. Even when she repeated those words over and over, she never expressed any emotion because there were none to show. If she had no tears to shed for me, then I shouldn't need to shed any for her. And why this pain? My eyes getting moist. Why was this happening? I still wanted to believe I hadn't been split apart. Enough, right? Inside me, an inner voice whispered gently. My spirit had suffered enough. Countless times I'd wavered over whether I should just throw the battered thing away. Except I've stubbornly refused to do that, haven't I? I'd feel better if I just threw it away. And knowing that, I chose to believe, didn't I? Only I can understand that painful struggle and appreciate it. Hey, me? I've tried more than enough. I'll acknowledge that much. So, isn't it alright to just take the easy way out? Besides, I'm not throwing it away. I'm leaving it behind, with her. Like flowers by a grave. Now then, calm your nerves. Even though you can't feel your right arm, just lift it up. And with every swing, forget a little more. That kindness made me happy. That adorable smile brought me joy. I liked pet petting your head. 
I loved how demure you were. Because this will be the last time. Because when I swing this down, I'll forget. This is my first and last day for you. Perhaps I really did love you. Igarashi no naku koro ni. Somebody has been apologizing for a while. I wonder what she's apologizing for. Felt wrong to eavesdrop, so I tried to ignore it. It had been a while since I last went to the city. I only returned to attend the funeral of a relative. Even though I'd lived there until last month, I found the bustle of the city to be overwhelming. Those skyscrapers and the multi-lane roads. The melodious cacophony of the crosswalk. Even the campaign speeches blaring in front of felt nostalgic. The place where I live now isn't nearly as lively. There's only the chirping of locusts and the babbling of brooks, and the cry of the higurashi, evening cicadas. Rather than making me feel lonely, that quietness had begun to instill a sense of serenity. There is nothing where I'm living now. I don't just mean there aren't any burger joints. There aren't even vending machines. That is extremely odd for Japan. No music stores, no restaurants, no arcades. Even an ice cream parlor would be unlikely. The nearest town had some stuff like that, but it's an hour away by bike. But come to think of it, it wasn't really a big deal. There were music stores and arcades and ice cream parlors, but it wasn't like I ever hung out at any of them. I had lived in the city for 10 years and never once been to an ice cream parlor. I should have gone at least once. Only now that I'm starting to regret that a little. Somebody is still apologizing. Who is she apologizing to? She's apologized so much, so just forgive her already. There's no reason anyone should ever need to apologize so much. I started to feel a bit annoyed at whoever was refusing to forgive her. No matter how bad the mistake, there's nothing that can't be forgiven. No such thing as an irreparable mistake. Just need to be more careful next time. Apologizing even now. Then, has she really done something that can't be fixed? I have no idea what she's done, but if it can't be fixed, then that's all the more reason to forgive her. No matter how much she apologizes, nothing will change. But even so, she keeps apologizing in such a heartbreaking place. Hey, you, the one she's apologizing to. Why don't you just go ahead and forgive her? Apologizing. Such a pathetic voice. Eichi, we're almost there. Wake up. I was finally roused from my nap by my father's prodding. Seemed the train had reached its final stop. I spent hours riding everything from the bullet train to the local routes. It was hard to believe that the landscape beyond the window in the city I was in half a day ago were this in the same country. No, that they were even from the same era. From there, we take a car deeper into the mountains.
past where the dense forest encroaching on the mountain road suddenly opened up. There, where I live now, Namizawa. Even though we were approaching summer, the morning air still had a frigid bite. Although in exchange you could fill your lungs up with crisp, clean air. Slipping open the window, I was greeted with a verdant expanse. Nothing but trees. The neighboring house was far away on the other side. So I was probably the only one enjoying the view and that air. I filled my lungs with another deep breath. I started living in Hinamizawa, I learned that even air has its own taste. I quickly finished getting ready for school and headed downstairs for breakfast. My mother was the only one there, my father was nowhere to be seen. He was probably working up until the morning. Working until the early morning. Dad had a rather unconventional job as a painter such a laid-back profession. Get up when you want, sleep when you want, and work when you want. I was so jealous of that easy-going lifestyle. I even wrote for school that I wanted to be a painter when I grew up. Dad was ecstatic about that. Just because it looked easy. I never tell him that, though. Mom laid breakfast out on the table. Seaweed, pickled vegetables, raw egg, and grilled salmon. My mom was such a good cook, it was scary. Hey. It left. Perfect, immaculate, ideal breakfast. Unlike my dad, who didn't even know the meaning of the word schedule, my mom never squandered any time or effort. She hummed a little tune as she brought over the miso soup. It seemed like she was in a good mood today. I'm so happy you've been waking up early since we moved here, Keiichi. If I don't wake up early, I won't have time to eat breakfast. I thought I was being cute, responding with a wisecrack after being praised for being good. Full bowl of rice or will half be enough? Pile it on. First, I savored the steaming hot rice with the seaweed. After that, I covered it with the egg. Between bites of rice, I enjoyed the crunch of the pickles. Not bad at all. Excellent, as usual. Watching me clean my plate, Mom gave me a warm smile. I'm so happy you haven't skipped breakfast ever since we were here, Keiichi. I was not a morning person when we lived in the city. I slept right until the last minute before school and rarely ate breakfast. Cutting the breakfast Mom made me each morning. That was probably the only way I could protest being forced to attend cram school. I guess that's what you would call my rebellious fit. I wouldn't so much as look at the breakfast she woke up early every day to make. If I could go back in time, I'd slap myself. Mindful of the time, Mom rushed me along with a wide grin. Isn't it about time to meet up with Rina-chan? Hurry, hurry. Mom really seemed to enjoy the fact that her son was going to school with a girl. Nina is one of my classmates. She really loves looking after people, coming to meet me every day without fail. The way I looked at it, a guy my age walking to school with a girl was just lame. But, well, keeping a classmate waiting for me every day would, wouldn't be very considerate. Seriously, though. How long does Rina want me? Eh. How long does Rina wait there for me every morning? Taking one last gulp of miso soup, I raced for the door. If anything, I'm gonna get some decent practice with the pronunciation. Please thank Rina Chen for the pickles. 
Come to think of it, those pickles weren't store-bought, were they? If I'd known that, I would have savored them a bit more. Morning. Tikkun. Good morning. Her cheerful greeting was as fresh as the morning itself. They're always so early. Try sleeping in sometimes. If I sleep in, I'll keep you waiting. She's so conscientious. And such a good person. If that ever happens, I'll just leave you behind. Ichikun, you're so cold. I wait for you all the time. I'll leave you in the dust. Without looking back. Why are you so mean? Why? Nina had a slightly troubled look on her face. Going with her was rather fun because of how quickly her mood changed. I'm kidding. I'd wait for you. With those words, Rina seemed to relax. Her face flushed bright red. Ah, thank you. I'd wait forever until you came, Nina. No matter how long. Ah, uh, ah, uh, or forever? Rina turned bright red. Steam rising from her head as her brain short circuited. She's especially weak to this sort of talk. It's quite rare to find someone this fun to tease. Have you ever read a romance novel, Rena? Huh? Ah, uh, I haven't. I never read any before. From that response, I gathered she was interested in them but was too embarrassed to actually buy one. I couldn't imagine what would happen if she did read one. Probably turn red and pass out. Oh yeah, message from mom. She says thanks for the pickles. It, it was nothing. You're welcome. How were they? Not too salty? They weren't that salty. Actually, they had a pretty light flavor to them. Would have been fine to just be honest and say they were good. But apparently I couldn't be that forthright. I'd like to ask something before that. You're the one who pickled them, Rena. Was it your mom? Huh? But why do you ask? Were, were they too salty? Her attitude completely changed as she began to panic frantically. Was it you, Rina? Was it your mom? Why are you asking who made them? Why? Depending upon who made them, my opinion of them might change drastically. Huh? Huh? Uh... She counted frantically on her fingers, trying to remember the amount of salt she'd used to pickle them. It wasn't a, like I was trying to tease her, but I couldn't stop myself. Guys who take pleasure in this kind of thing are probably the worst. Guys like me. Tina nervously opened and closed her mouth over and over, trying to muster her response. Me. Delicious. Huh? Pretty good, just like the last ones. They went perfectly with the rice. Her face went bright red again. Completely spacing out. It really was a lot of fun to tease her. I pray that Vina never gets taken advantage of by some lowlife. Keep at it, Rina. I'll train you until you handle it like the average person. So I decided for myself. Let's go. If we keep on waiting, we'll never hear the end of it. The thing is, she just keeps facing out otherwise. Hold Rina back to reality so we can make our way to school. This strange, easily flustered girl is Rina Ryugu. Ryugu. I've only known her for about a month, but I've come to realize it's not just her name that's strange. Yes, I've been mispronouncing it. It's Dana. You know. Hey, Chan, good morning. Coming up to the next rendezvous point, we saw another person waiting for us. Noticing us, he waved. Ah, finally! Finally, you two are late. Usually, you're the one who's late. Sharp contrast to the diligent Vena. This one marched to the beat of her own drum. 
Neon Sonozaki. For what it's worth, he's our senior and head of the class. Morning, Aina. It's been quite a while, Keichan. How many years? Only off two days. Ahahaha. <laughs> you don't say. You're so much cuter back then. Sun's gaze started at my chest, then dropped straight down, focusing on the point between my legs. Though she's saying it was my crotch that was cuter back then. Before you ask, just to be clear, I've never actually tried to show it to her. I've grown quite splendidly. You'd be surprised. Not only is he bigger, but he has a little mustache now. Being so engorged with energy every morning is quite a problem, though. I'll introduce you next time, so be sure to greet him properly. Don't say next time. Right now is just fine. How about letting the little guy get a breath of fresh morning air? I don't hear it. I don't think I've ever heard talk so dirty. You call it fouling up the morning air before. Neon sure does act like an old man sometimes. Gotcha. Time for the big reveal. Hope you don't regret it. My hand reached for my fly. Dana began to ramble in a near panic. Hey, 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 hey! What are you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Red faced and flustered, Dana tried to play dumb, but it was obvious she knew exactly what we were talking about. How was it? In the city again. Neon switched gears, dropping the dirty talk and changing the topic to something more befitting the pleasant morning. I only went for a funeral. I didn't have much time. So yeah, did you look for it? That thing I asked for? Or not looking at all. Just came back from a funeral. Didn't have time to look around in toy stores. Toy stores and hobby shops are completely different, you know. It's really difficult to get western stuff around here, after all. Is this about games again, Michan? Neon nodded. Proudly, as it ain't Giggled. Yep, I want to catch on to bring me back a west port catalog, you see. West port was short for western imported games. That abbreviation did make it sound pretty geeky. You can just get them to send you one in the mail, can't you? Well, I guess I have to now. You get another game full of hot action. This time I'd like a game that's easy to understand. Yon is a board card game enthusiast, and I hear she's collected quite a lot of different ones. According to Nina, Yon's room has kind of become a museum for domestic and foreign games. There's a game you think I'd understand. Let me play too. Eh, of course. Hey, Chan is up for it. I should warn you though, we're pretty tough. Just what I want. I play all sorts of games. I don't intend to lose. Whoa. And we'll let you into the group this time. Yes. I guess. Bristling with joy from head to toe, Dana looked back and forth between me and Neon. Neon gave her an affirmative wink. Her expression perked up even further. I thought boys preferred playing outside more, so I figured you wouldn't want to. Raina laughed happily. Such a friendly conversation, you wouldn't think I had moved here less than a month ago. I understand that they did all they could to make a transfer student like me feel at home. I'll have to try harder to fit in. So they won't feel like they have to try and make me feel welcome. I feel... I felt... I felt like if I acted a bit more open than usual, it should probably be about right for this place. Namizawa was a small village. Not only was there one school, but there was only one class. That class encompassed all different grades and ages. There are about 30 students at different levels, and they all study in the same class. 
I'm told that long ago there used to be a bigger school building and they had actual separate classes. However, it seems that something happened that made them become a single class. And now it stayed that way out of tradition. It's actually kind of funny, uh, kind of cool, that um, single class thing. Um, I was watching a program on... Uh, It was a. It was a show discussing Japanese things, Japanology. That's the, the word I was looking for. Um, it's hosted by a British guy um, who's half Japanese, and uh, in one of them they were talking about um, a school that was on one of the small seaport. Um, villages, and like everybody in the in the school was in the same class, and they would like, as part of their uh, learning in the class, it was a lot of practical information as well. So they would go down to the docks and learn about sea life and stuff like that. So, um, kind of wish that there was more practical stuff like that these days. Another, at least when I was growing up. I mean, uh, field trips to the museum is nice and all, but museum, the zoo, that was it for field trips. Anyways, I was shocked at first, but humans adapt pretty quickly. I've already gotten quite used to it. The sound of children playing started right from morning. Such lively mood, it felt more like a kindergarten than a proper school. Not that that was a bad thing. Quick saving. Leon, who had been walking up in front of us until then, suddenly let me take the lead. Right in front of the classroom door. Well, I was meant to slide the door open and enter the room first. Eh. Too bad I wasn't going to fall for that again. You'd give up the lead here. You meant for this to be a test of my skills. Leon chuckled with a haughty smirk on her face. But what is it, you guys? Step back, Reina, it's dangerous. He's here. Huh? Then Satoko-chan is? Her name was Satoko Hojo. She was a disrespectful, impudent, bossy kid. The way she talks was annoying, but it would be immature to get worked up over just that. The real problem was this. Quite the obvious trap, a blackboard eraser wedged in the door. Too obvious, Satoko. A haughty laugh came from behind the door. Excellent, Keichan. I guess that means you win this round. No, this is Satoko we're talking about. I doubt that is it. After falling for such intricate traps since the day I transferred, I no longer let my guard down. Satoko liked to combine a variety of traps. Traps that were simply there to bait you into the main one. Traps that relentlessly kept coming at you like a sadistic Rube Goldberg machine. The list goes on. Fun fact. Rube Goldberg machine, Japan, is referred to as a Pythagoras switch. Don't ask me why. As well as being clever, they almost never misfire. When you least suspect it, he strikes. No escape, no time to relax. By the looks of it, its eraser is normal. No rocks or anything in it. I took a pretty heavy hit from a blackboard eraser loaded with rocks on my first day. Then why don't you just open the door and let it drop? That's what it is. That's what Satoko was after. Making me focus my attention upwards, so as I lifted my hand to the door, or thumbtacks stuck to the sliding door handle with tape. Frightening trap. Potent and terrifying trap. Sealed by using the blackboard eraser. An impressive combination, Satoko. But in the end, nothing more than the trivial machinations of a child. Heard of my victory, I threw open the door and stepped into the room. 
felt something strange at my ankle. It was similar to the sensation of a jump rope catching on my leg. By the time I realized she had me, hook, line, and sinker, it was already too late. I began to fall in an almost picturesque manner. Hey, Jen, watch out! Instinctively re reacting to Neon's shrill warning, I twisted my body in midair before I landed on the floor. Ow, ow, ow. An inkstone filled to the brim was placed right where I would have landed. Ooh. Inkstone, for anybody that does not know, is a... In the west we have um, like a bottle of ink, you just like dip into the inkwell. They have a stone that's set for calligraphy and writing. They produce the ink and... I shuddered imagining the situation I had landed square on it. My, my, what do we have here? A fair morning to you, Keiichi san. Aren't we a lively one this morning? Still sprawled in an awkward position, I was greeted by a mocking voice. That was a step up from your usual trap, Sato. I haven't the faintest idea what you mean. You're quite unlucky this morning. A little. I'd inadvertently sprained my back a little when I landed. Better than landing on that ink stone. small hand gently rubbed my head. Pain, pain, go away. A small, dainty hand continued to gently stroke my head. You didn't sprain your back or anything, did you? If you rub it like this, the pain disappears. I thought about asking how rubbing my head would help my back, but I didn't. It's not so much about what you actually do, it's the thought that counts. Yeah, thanks Rika-chan. Pain's going away now. Hey, Rika-chan, good morning. Good morning to you, Ina. A good morning to all. Rika-chan greeted each of us with an adorable little bow. It was infectious. Ina, Mion, and I all bowed back. Such a good kid, Rika-chan. So much better than Satoko. I glared over in her direction. Toko was whistling while rather deliberately trying to avoid eye contact. I am the very model of a good girl. Good girl wouldn't set those nasty traps. Nothing but lies and slander. Exactly what proof, but I picked up Satoko by the back of her collar. She looks like a misbehaved cat when I do this, but a cat wouldn't be setting traps. She's much harder to deal with. I'm sorry. Try saying that. If you won't say it, I cocked my index finger on my thumb, letting it tremble as I brought it closer to Satoko's forehead. I I'm against violence. You don't even have any proof. Just so you know, my forehead flick really hurts. And split plywood right in half. E Stop, get away from me, you beast. Don't say that in a way people will misunderstand. Small hand tugged on the back of my shirt. She's been lonely since you were gone for two days. Rika-chan is really just so... How could I do anything more after being told that? I gently released my grip on Satoko, who at this point was on the verge of tears. She still had her eyes clamped shut as she braced herself for the forehead flick. Ah! Doesn't bother me. Ah! Mustn't cry, Satoko. Keep on fighting, yeah? Rika gently petted, petted the head of her prankster friend. You would never guess those two are the same age. I think Satoko could learn a thing or a million from... 
next time, set an even more amazing trap. Wait a minute. As she observed the scene, Reina's expression grew ecstatic as she began to swoon. Oh, Satoko-chan is crying. Oh, so oh cute. Can't take them home. But, but, they're so cute. You can't, no matter how cute they are. But just for a bit is fine. It's fine? Reina kept a cutesy face even as outrageous ideas spewed from her mouth. According to Mion, Reina is ridiculously weak to cute things and always tries to take them home. Object or person. Healing is bad, but abducting people is worse. Give it up. Then I can just look. Just looking. That should be fine, right? Right? Reina swooned over Satoko's crying form. If a girl ever goes missing in Hinamizawa, I'll be forced to turn Reina into the authorities. Forgive me, Reina. I'll be sure to bring you care packages when they put you away. The teacher's coming. Quickly, clean everything up. Satoko, that inkstone is yours, right? Just from Mion's single statement, the entire mood of the room shifted back to normal. Inkstone was bad, but the thumbtacks stuck to the door handle were an even bigger problem. I pulled the tape off carefully, making sure not to skewer myself. Even though Satoko was the only was the one who set it up, everyone had to pick up after her. By the time the teacher entered the room, the bedlam from before had been neatly tidied up. We made it in time. Rise. Attention. Neon gave the morning commands. It's difficult being the te teacher for all these different grades in one classroom. She has to teach something different to each one. But naturally, she ends up spending all her time with the younger kids. Dana and Mion, being the highest grade in the class, end up mostly doing self-study. They even end up helping to teach the younger kids. So it seems they can never get their own studies. They're actually way behind where my studies have progressed to. As a result, I'm pretty much taking over for the teacher and helping Reina and Mion with their studies. You're a pretty good teacher, keiichi -kun. Easy to understand. Reina took a breather after finishing highlighting an important section. Teaching is making me lose confidence. It makes me aware of how shallow my understanding of the subject is. They say that to teach something. They say that to teach someone something, you need to understand it backwards, forwards. So while you're teaching us, you're getting in your own practice. In contrast, this person over here is quite laissez faire about things. For one, isn't she supposed to be in a higher grade than me? Look, Mion, this is for your own good. If you don't take this seriously, there will be trouble later on. These marks. Not like I'm aiming to go on to a prestigious school. I'll be fine as long as I pick up what I need to know for the entrance exams a little at a time. Her staunch defiance was really something else. This was a different type of relax than somebody who already knew what was going what was going to be on the entrance. One second, please. Sorry. This was a different type of relax than somebody who already knew what was going to be on the entrance exams. Hey Chan, Keiichi Kun is, is doing his best to teach us. We need to try hard too. Such a good and honest kid, Reina. I'll make sure you guys get accepted to in good school. What? What? Thanks so much. Especially you, Dana. Private lessons, just the two of us. Pri private le lessons? 
A puff of smoke shaped like a halo popped out of Reyna's head. Exactly what kind of private lessons is she fantasizing about to make her turn so red? I'd like to hear the play-by-play -play about that next time. While Mion was flipping through her vocabulary flashcards, she threw out a casual question. So in the city, do you have to study this much? If you don't know at least this much, you can't get into university. So you study just to get into a university? Well, yeah, basically. Well, knowing that this stuff won't ever come in handy in the future. Out here, you can get into a university as long as your attendance is good enough. Really? Study equals entrance exam. Having that basic law of the universe so easily overturned sent me into a state of shock. That is right. There aren't really enough people around here to warrant weeding them out with an exam. If anyone can get into university, then there's no need to be all uptight about this stuff, right? Well, that's true, but you should at least know that that stuff's common knowledge. This old geezer, geezer thinks that instead of wasting time pointlessly... This old geezer thinks that instead of wasting time studying pointlessly, you should be spending your precious teen years doing more mean meaningful things. It was too profound of a statement to simply laugh off. But since it was Mion, it probably didn't actually have that deep of a meaning. In place of a chime, the sound of the principal waving a handbell drifted through the classroom. Hey Chan, we're done. We're done! It's our wonderful lunchtime. In a complete 180 from her unmotivated state, Mion gave the commands that signaled the end of the morning period. Hey kun let's have lunch. I might have been making a very troubled face. Dana smiled brightly at me. Alright, let's eat. There seemed to be different cliques, even within the class. Most of them were divided up by gender and age, but our group was different. Our ages were different, and we had both boys and girls. But we weren't reserved around each other. This level of openness makes a transfer student like me pretty happy. Dana and Mion pushed their desks together so that they were facing each other. At the same time, Satoko and Rika-chan slowly lugging their desks over as well. Hey, Chikun, hurry, hurry! Dana waved her chopsticks in an unrefined manner, trying to hurry me along. Unless everyone was together, they wouldn't even open their lunchboxes. Eichi-san's lunchbox is most assuredly filled with nothing but bread crusts, like some sort of destitute plebeian. Why don't you just show it to us? Come on! Even though Satoko was hurling insults at me, she still wouldn't open the lid of her lunchbox until I was there. I pulled out my lunchbox swiftly and dragged my chair over to join the circle. Hey, sorry to keep you waiting. Well then, Representative Me, please give the signal to start. At first, this was kind of embarrassing, but I got used to it pretty fast. At this point, I probably wouldn't even open my own lunchbox if someone else was too slow. Our ages and genders may have all been different, but we were all friends. Let's eat! The sound of our little five-part chorus echoed beautifully through the classroom. Really though, I've gotten pretty used to this group, made up of all girls. Of course there are other boys in class, but they were a lot younger, so they were scared to approach me. Well, that's to be expected. Younger boys just see older boys as scary. Compare that to girls. Well, at least these girls aren't picky. We put all the side dishes in the middle where everybody was free to pick at them. I thought girls would mind sharing a meal with a guy, so I was a bit flustered joining in. However, Mio noticed that and teased me quite a bit. As the fruit of my efforts, I can now reach over and take sides for anybody's lunch. My my, isn't Sir Keiichi's lunch extravagant today? My my, isn't Madame Satoka's lunch extravagant as well? Stewed, stewed stuff has a nice look to it, rather trendy. Buying into the fight that Satoka was starting, 
our chopsticks locked in the cross counter stabbing into each other's lunch. My, how delicious. Oh, this taro is good. Never had taro? The root? Delicious. Find it and try it. The stewed stuff is good too, even cold. After seeing my happy face, Ika Chen's expression broke into a little smile. I saved some from dinner last night. By the way, Toko and Rika Chen's lunches are always the same. It seems that Rika Chen makes it for both of them every day. Rika Chen made this too? These taste like mom's home cooking. I was honestly impressed. The carrot rosettes weren't from a mold, they were done by hand with a knife. That's not easy to do. I guess Rika Chen's just good at this sort of thing. She's really good at sewing, laundry, and stuff like that. Amazing, right? Amazing. Amazing, or her parents make her do it. Rika is quite exceptional in many ways. Oh ho 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 ho. That's nothing for you to boast about. Rina's actually better at cooking than I am. Huh? Uh, well, no. It seemed that the topic of conversation switched to Reina when she wasn't expecting it, making her blush and trip over her words. That was me tonight. I could not think. I had to go out and do some errands. Reina's lunch looked... Reina's lunch really was the star of the table. Not only did it look good, it tasted good. Everyone else pulled from Reina's lunchbox constantly. Everyone liked this one so much before, so I made a lot this time. Good, I hope. I hope. It's got high marks for me. Ah, Mion, you're taking too much. Knocking Mion's chopsticks aside, I reached out, trying to secure my own portion. The Toko and Rika Chen reached over at the same time, and struggle ensued. Everyone shoveled in mouthful after mouthful while praising it, and Reina's lunchbox was soon empty. It was kind of bad that no one thought to leave any for Reina. But Reina seemed rather satisfied as she looked on. How did you like it? Isn't Reina san an extremely good cook too? Quite different from Keiichi san. I said that's nothing for you to boast about. You're not much different from Keiichi san, Satoko. Can you tell the difference between broccoli and cauliflower yet? Satoko's face went pale. Hey, hey, even I can tell the difference between broccoli and cauliflower, you know. Of course I can. I really can. It's really hard for her to lie. Ichikun, both taste good when they're boiled and topped with mayo, right? You shouldn't be picking on her. Mi Chen too. Ana hurried, hurriedly tried to follow up, but Mion laughed haughtily as she drew closer to Satoko. Well, well, just pretend it's a little home ec lesson. Now then, Satoko, what's this? Mion lifted up her chopstick. Between them was a piece of green stuff wrapped in bacon. But that's a spare. Mion made eye contact with me, and within 0.3 seconds, I had Bika Chan's mouth covered. Holding a piece of bacon wrapped asparagus and giving her two choices. She's pretty terrible. Um. Well, uh, yellow one is cauliflower. No, wait, the green one is cal- So which, hmm? Probably the yellow one is broccoli and the blue one is cauliflower. But the green one is, um, uh... Do you really know which is which? How about you just give up? Expect no less from the class representative. The oldest. The way she drives people into a corner just shows how much experience she has. This is just a hunch, but being brought- but being brought into the Sonozoki household must be quite the ordeal. I do know. I really do. And answer the question. I know, I know. Ah She finally broke down and started crying. When she acts like this, she actually starts to seem her age. Ah how cute. 
Dana entered a state of euphoria as Satoko bawled ball her eyes out. Dana was it? Oh. Dana was in a state of bliss as she rubbed her cheek against Satoko's head and smothered her. Really, a very content face. One that wouldn't care if the world ended right then. It was that kind of smile. Dana! Dana! Mimi is picking on me. Cute, cute. It's okay, Dana and Nechan will take care of all those bad people who tease my little sister. Wish, boof, bam. Like a flash of lightning. What was that just now? Both of Reina's fists shot out at supersonic speed, striking Mion and me squarely in our faces. Before we knew it, Mion and I were sprawled spread eagle on the floor, staring up at the ceiling with matching welts on our faces. This is the first time you've got one, right? Today, you went easy on us. Easy? You mean there's something harder than this? With that, Mion and I both slumped our heads back to the floor in unison. Now on, I'll be careful when I'm striking within striking distance of Reina. See, Satoko-chan, I took care of them. Cute. I want to take you home. Making sure Reina couldn't see it, Satoko stuck her tongue out at us. Damn it all, using Reina as a puppet. Pika-chan massaged her bruises without saying a word. Let's open up the menu, save and load. Save it here. And I think I'm going to switch over to Dark Souls here. This has been a fun game, but I'm expecting it to, to have a bit darkness in the night, so we'll wait for next week to get to that. So watching this part of it.